Hello everyone, my name is Sinner and we've got something new for you today. However, before we get into the video, I'd like to take a moment to tell you that nearly 70% of people who watch our videos are not subscribed. If you're not subscribed, you could do me a huge favor by liking the video, commenting below, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that bell. It really helps out the channel and lets me know that you're liking what I'm making. Alright, without further ado, let's get into the video. Hello everyone, my name is Sinmer and this is Elden Ring, specifically a tutorial for brand new players and just returning players who want to know what's probably an easier start. <clears throat> so we're going to be starting with the Confessor. Body type A is basically men, body type B is basically female, women. <clears throat> Whatever one you want, and we're on PC, I guess, so we have this weird crap, but we're just going to put in a simple name. Uh, none of this matters, except for keepsake, let's go ahead and go to Golden Seed. There's going to be a couple of cutscenes that we're going to skip, but what I recommend is Confessor and Golden Seed for your very first playthrough, or if you are new to the game. <clears throat> However you want to play something else, like you want to play a mage, uh, you can go with Ast Astrologer, those are the mages. But if you're a returning player, then we all know the best class in the game, right? But let's for new players, let's go with the Confessor. And we will see why in just a little bit. Now cutscene's gonna play, we're gonna skip that for you guys, so we don't have to sit through that. Alright, let's do this. Alright, so, the Confessor is really good. When you start the game, you get ring. But the Confessor is really good for a handful of reasons. <clears throat> First off, they start with a 100% physical block shield. This is actually really important. Now, the reason for this <clears throat> is with a 100% physical block shield, most enemies in the game do physical damage. This means that you can block most enemy attacks and take no damage, unless you get Guard Bergen. We can talk about that later. And uh, that actually helps you quite a bit. You also start with a straight sword, which is really good for starting the game. As you get further in the game, you will uh, you will find new weapons, you'll start using new weapons. And <clears throat> the other reason this is good is we have these two spells here, these two miracles. Now what I recommend you do is you move this Sacred Seal up here. <clears throat> you can do that by just hitting X or whatever it is, the bottom, um, the bottom button uh, below Y on an Xbox controller on an empty slot. <clears throat> that will let us go and pull this up, just press X again when, you're, when you have it highlighted. And that moves the seal over to your right hand. Because we really don't have any spells that require us to have our shield up, but uh, we'll we'll probably be aware if our weapon isn't in our hand <laughs> more than our shield. Otherwise, what ends up happening is you start casting a spell, and when you want to block, and next thing you know, you're getting hit, and that can put a lot of that can turn a lot of players off. Now, as you'll see, we can't leave yet. It says we only open it only opens for those who have the finger, and well, the finger's here. Now, there's another thing. I want to talk about enemies real quick. Because this place is fantastic for that. Notice how there's a lot of sound when we move around. Well, this is part of how enemies enemies detect you. The first way they detect you is visually. They have to see you. Second, The second way they detect you is by hearing you. And the third way they detect you is when you hit them. So if you backstab an enemy, they will by default become aware of you. Now you can you can sneak in the game by pushing down the left analog stick. And that allows you to sneak around. Now listen to the comparison between us walking and sneaking. It's still there, but it's less it's less pronounced. What about running? So running's probably a little bit louder for us than walking. <clears throat> and uh, this is important because we have this spell called Assassin's Approach. Just to show it off. Well, we can run, we can jump. It gets rid of all sound, including running through water. It also gets rid of a lot of the sound from dodging as well. Swinging still causes a lot of noise. So, uh, that's that's the two. 
the then we have urgent heal. So the main reason you guys are starting, I recommend you start as a confessor, is because urgent heal it heals roughly twice as much health as it costs in an FP, the blue bar, and the healing items you're going to get those effectively those heal a lot. Uh, that heals pretty much your entire blue bar. Uh, now, what this means is you're effectively getting around twice the red bar and heals just with the blue bar by itself. Probably a little bit more than just that. Now, uh, we haven't been we haven't taken any damage yet, so <laughs> we can't really show you the how much it heals. But just rest assured that it is a nice amount, and you're going to want to uh, use that for longevity, especially if you're a new player, since you will reliably take damage but also reliably win fights. You'll just take damage in those fights, but you'll still win them. So, let's go ahead and move a little bit further in the game. Alright, so we have gotten past the introductory cutscenes, and we are a little bit further in. So the Flask of Crimson Tears and the Flask of Cerulean or Cerulean Tears. These are important. The Crimson Tears heals our health, and the uh, Cerulean Tears heals our, uh, heals our FP. Now we're going to take some intentional damage here, just so we can show that off. That's a nice amount of health damage. So what happens if we use Urgent Heal? How much does it heal? Most of that, and uh, the blue is kind of... Uh, it was reduced by a little bit, but it's pretty good. These are called Sites of Grace. These are essentially the bonfires from previous games, or any other checkpoint that you're familiar with. You can light them, or discover them, I guess, and you can sit at them. If you sit at them, this restores your HP, it restores your flasks, and everything else. Now, if you'll remember, I recommended that you start uh, that you start with a golden seed. The reason for that is we can turn our first golden seed into another flask. So we can go add charge to flask, yes, and now we have more than what, and then we have extra flasks. What I recommend you do is you allocate these as two of the Crimson Flasks and three of the Cerulean, Cerulean Flasks. The reason for this is, as I said previously, you will reliably win fights as a new player, but you'll take damage doing it. Now, the Crimson Tear Flask, the Flask of Crimson Tears, is effectively a full heal. The Flask of Cerulean Tears is effectively a full blue heal, if you will. It heals your focus points. Now, these urgent heals, you get more healing from... You gain more healing than you lose in focus points. So, you'll actually be able to heal more over time using the blue flasks and urgent heal, and then later heals when you get those. Uh, those later heals are actually AoE heals, so you can heal friends if you have them. So let's go ahead and go through this tutorial here, and this should get you some ideas. So we have the lock-on here, that is the right analog stick. If we, It's the one that's closest to the... Um, uh, uh, the, the face buttons, as they're called, not the directional buttons. So let's talk about how we do things. So if you press the directional buttons on the left side of the, of the controller, you can change your... Uh, what you have equipped in each arm. You can press up to change your spells and down to change the items you have equipped. Those items are over here. So, we have that. You attack, you use the right... So, the right and left hand weapons or items are controlled using the left and right bumper and the left and right trigger. So, the we have a weapon in our right hand. So, if we press the right bumper, we will do attacks. Now, there, the weapons in this game have a combo or, or an attack chain. Yeah, that whoosh that you heard at the end there, that means the combo has ended. There are heavy attacks. This typically only have a combo of two. It's not really a combo. And there are charged heavy attacks where you hold down the right trigger instead of just pressing it. Now these do extra damage, uh, so the heavy attacks do more damage than light attacks. This does some damage, that does more damage, and that does much more damage. But there's something else here, and that's called poise. 
So enemies have, uh, well, the enemies essentially have a stagger meter. Uh, you'll hear it called, referred to as poise, and you'll hear it referred to as stagger. So basically how it works is light attacks do one times the stagger damage. Heavy attacks do about two times. Two times of a light attack. And charged heavy attacks do about four times the stagger damage as a light attack. What... This is going to be really confusing at first, but you'll see it in action relatively soon. There's also, you can jump pressing X, or whatever the button below Y is on an Xbox controller. And you can attack while you're in the air as well. And most importantly, you can jump and do a heavy attack to still do a heavy attack. This is important because you'll typically be doing stuff like that, trying to take down enemies. So if you press and hold Y or triangle, it will bring up a new menu. This is also where you can two-hand items by uh, clicking on their bumper or their trigger. As you can see, we can two-hand our sword. We can also two-hand our shield. You can also put uh, things in the pouches here by going over here. You have to press Y or triangle to put things there. Uh, so there we go. So it's saying we have parry on the left side over there. Let's let's look into that. So when you use the left trigger, it will do whatever art of war or special ability is attached to that item. Now when you have when you're holding something in your left hand slot, uh, you will use that item. If you are two handing an item, you will always use the two handed items. Uh, Art of War, which in this case is called Square Off. It basically gives you a shield break and a rush that uh, does extra damage. I think it knocks them down too. So we don't have any sorceries, so we're not going to worry about that too much. And we have guarding over here as well. As you can see, we have a 100% shield. He only does physical damage, and we were able to completely ignore his attack and take no uh, health damage there. Let's kill him. We have dodging. That's where you press circle or whatever the button to the right of Y is. And so when he attacks, we can sort of just dodge out of the way. It does give you immunity frames where he just can't hit you. And we can just quickly kill him. Now you press X or whatever it is, the button up below Y is, to dodge, and sometimes the enemies will be using ranged attacks against you, we will just run past those, you can also block those. But over here we have this guy. So it wants us to two-hand our item. So we can charge, we can poise break him, stagger break him. Then we can hit him for a critical attack just by walking up and pressing L1, or I mean, R1, our attack. Now, if you poise break someone and then you just, your character just attacks them, that means you had that attack buffered. So I'll explain that. So if we do this and then we press it while that is still, while that's about halfway or so done, <clears throat> it will follow through on that. So if you're mashing attack, then uh, you will miss those 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 uh, those counter attacks of poise, those critical attacks. Having a shield that is a bit more useful to us, so let's go and do that. Now there's something called ga called guard counters. Let's show that off. You can backstab enemies too by going behind them. Now a guard counter is an enemy attacks your shield and you hit heavy attack right afterwards. Now this guy will probably be able to show off Toys Bricks. Nope, we'll have to do it on the boss. But uh, we can take that guy out pretty easily. And we have skills, so... We can do this. Okay, never mind. <laughs> we'll show that off in just a second. So you can crouch. And that will make it harder for enemies to spot you. If you go into tall grass, they more or less can't spot you. If you block or go into any weapon art, 
then that will cause them to be that will cause your character to stand back up. So just be aware. Now you can sneak up on enemies and you can backstab them. An enemy that has not detected you takes additional damage. So it can be useful for killing certain enemies. So you have stance breaking. If you do that jump heavy attack, you can stun certain enemies. <laughs> that works pretty well. Now there is no durability in the game as far as I can tell, so jumping and just doing jumping and doing stuff like this doesn't actually cause any damage to your weapon. This is a stake of Marika. So if you die, uh, you you have the option to respawn at these. Now, uh, some of those are broken, not like physically, like you see here. Some of them just don't work. Uh, usually, those will spit you out at the at the front of a dungeon. I have a feeling those will be patched out and uh, those will be fixed fairly soon. Now you see that uh, in the top right corner of the screen. So over here, you can see there seems to be that that statue of Marika there. I don't think we can, like, yeah, we can't, like, mouse over them and see what they are, but I believe that means that there's a stake of Marika that you could respawn at. So let's go, whenever you see something like this, this means this is a boss fog, so let's go ahead and fight the boss. It's a soldier of Godric. So, now it teaches you about guard counters. And there you go. The harder spawns in the game, clearly. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> and don't worry if you died to this boss. Lots and lots of people died to this boss. As you can see, each one of the blood stains is somebody who died. And but as a confessor, you have a 100% block shield. You have a sword that you can use to deal lots and lots of damage. And that sword should carry you through most of the game. So, we're going to go ahead and move a little bit further into the game, just so we can show off some things you should absolutely get your hands on uh, as early as possible. Okay, so as you can see, we have our second Sight of Grace here. Just me, it's the second one you can find. And this leads to an optional area, so you can go down there and get some items, but you have to use a stone sword key. We don't have any of those right now, but you can find them from merchants in the open world pretty cheaply like 2,000 souls. Believe me, that's cheap. <laughs> and uh, over here we'll find our co-op items. Absolutely grab these. So, first off we have the Sever, the Finger Severer. This basically lets you leave a world you have joined through co-op and go back home, or to send a cooperator, a, a friendly PC, out of your world. This is the Tarnished Furled Finger. That's basically your yellow soapstone, your I want to be summoned and I want my sign to be right here, as opposed to something else. This is most useful for making sure you can go to a specific dungeon, as opposed to being summoned to pretty much any area. So let's go get the summon to any area of unlocked item next. All right, so next we have the door we need to open to get outside. Don't worry, you'll find this. Uh, it isn't uh, hidden or anything. We see the third site of grace that we can go to. We have some guy over there. Don't worry, he's not hostile. Unless you attack him and then he becomes hostile. So, spots of sites of grace, they have this direction, this little hint that they're trying to tell you to go towards. So, it wants you to go this way, this way. But uh, we're actually going to come over here first. And we're going to go to this. These are summoning pools. Summoning pools are super useful. We have the Golden Effigy now. Now you want to make sure you activate each summoning pool. If you can walk up to it and it doesn't say anything, then it's active. <laughs> but let's go over here and we can see this. The small Golden Effigy. We just got that for interacting with the summoning pool. What this does is, when you use it, it sends a your co-op sign to every summoning pool you have activated. That means if you just have this one, it just goes there, right on the ground. 
if you have this one and then one over there and one over there, it goes to all three of them. If you have this one and 50 others, it goes to all 51 of them. So, there you go. That's how that one works. It's really useful if you just want quick co-op for runes or something like that, or currency, or drops. Uh, then, if you just want to help people and have fun with that, some no-pressure gameplay effectively, then you want to use this. If, however, you want to practice on a boss, you want to go to sort of that area where the boss is, you want to find this summoning pool, and you want to put down a tarnished pearled finger, like that. Now we're going to get rid of ours, uh, because we don't actually want to be summoned right now. But uh, that's how you guarantee that you are summoned to a specific boss fight, or a specific dungeon. Now, it just wants you to pull up the map there, that's the tutorial that's on the PS4, that's the uh, touchpad there. So, what we actually want to do is we want to make our way over to that church over there. So, the safest way to do this is we go over to this ruin here. And we can just jump over it and such. And we're going to go to that church and just try to see what's going on there. So we have 609 souls, we need at least 300 after we talk, before we talk to Santa Claus here, we're gonna buy an item immediately. You're a I can also let so, you when we speak, to, we speak to Santa Claus, aka Kale, we can go to purchase, and we wanna buy this, the crafting kit. This is something we absolutely want to buy. Do not accidentally not pick that up. Now, we come over here, we pick up this item, and we can interact with the sleeping table to upgrade our items to plus three, just in case you wanted to do that. The increase in power for upgrading is not, like, profound or anything like that. So just be aware that it is useful, but it's not, like, game... It's not game-changing, at least not for a while. You'll be, you'll be good at the game by the time you absolutely need to start doing that. But here we go. We can collect items, and we have that Erdleaf flower. Erdleaf flowers are actually one half of the PV of the co-op item. We can find one there, and I think there's another one around here. Those are rover fruits. It's rover fruit. It's not here. Uh, but there's another one around here somewhere. There it is. So that's another earthly flower. So we can go to craft item. We can go over here, and congratulations, you now have the item you need to be able to summon other players. Now, so let's just go ahead and activate that so we can see other summoning signs. Unless you have somebody in your world, uh, a co-op partner, you can't be invaded by real players. So, if we just want to go and see what's around here, we can do that. Now, as you can see, there are plenty of people who want to co-op. Uh, today is uh, March 6th, 2022. And there are still tons and tons of people out here. So don't be too worried about that. If you get killed, by the way, the items, the earth leaves, those respawn endlessly. So if you really wanted to, you could run over here, you could pick up this earth leaf flower, you could run back, you could rest at this bond, you could rest at this site of grace, and then go collect the second one. And now you can just go and craft another one. I recommend you have at least two of those co-op items on you at all times, just so you can cancel your... <clears throat> just so you can cancel your uh, co-op where you're being able to detect all of these. Over here we have our first uh, sort of enemies in the real world. And he's going to attack us. As you can see, he did some stamina damage, but he didn't do any hit point damage, because he hit us with his sword. If he had attacked us with his torch, that would have done some fire and some physical damage. There's another early flower. And that would have caused us to take some damage. Now, these guys can be poise broken. 
just by uh, with a charged heavy attack. And we see there's a side of there's a statue of Marika here. That usually means there's some sort of hard fight up ahead, and they and the the developers are expecting you to probably die. Also, a thing about these items. If you die while one is active, but you don't have somebody in your world, you get it back. <laughs> so we have some people who are interested in maybe fighting this area because they might be new players, or they just like farming the area or helping new players. There are tons and tons and tons of people who are ready to help you in this game. So just go ahead and hang out with those guys, let them join you, and things should work out just fine. Now, there's something else here, and that is that uh, when we sit at this bonfire, this, uh, this side of grace, there's going to be a cutscene. I'm, I'm going to skip that, but I'm going to let you guys enjoy that on your own. So we need to activate it, and then sit down. Okay, and so when this character shows up, you'll get a prompt to say re accept or refuse. Uh, just go with accept. So and that will give you this, the Spectral Steed Whistle. So that will let you summon Torrent, which is basically the horse. That's fast travel. Well, not fast travel, it just lets you move more quickly. So the game is telling you about pouches. I recommend using this one. So you'll need to use Triangle or Y to put Torrent's uh, item there. And then after that, you can jump on Torrent anytime you want. You can get on him, you can get off him, just by pressing triangle and pressing the down button to summon him. Um, now, we're going to head back to the church, because there's somebody there after we get to who wants to speak to us. So, we can just teleport, we mouse over it, or we move our cursor over it, and we press X or whatever the button below Y is. And we can teleport over to there. So, teleportation is the game right from the get-go. This way tarnished. May I have a word? And we have this character who will give us some stuff. I'm gonna let you guys enjoy the uh, conversation with her on your own though. So we're gonna skip it. All right, so she has left and she gave us some items. Things that she gave us was, the things that she gave us were, first, this bell, this bell the spirit calling bell. The second item she gave us was the lone wolf ashes. Lone Wolf Ashes are really powerful, uh, but you can't summon them just anywhere. You have to be in a specific area that lets them be summoned. So we're going to go show you that, but first, I want to explain all the stats to you, and I want to explain some very basic uh, things. So let's start with weapon. Let's start with pretty much any item in the game. It has scaling, so you can see that there seems to be some sort of attribute scaling stat here. B, E, and then some numbers here, strength 10, dex, tw dex 10. These are the requirements. You have to have this much to use the item effectively. If you're below on strength or dex, the item will do far less damage and uh, you won't be able to effectively use it. With scaling, this is how much extra damage you get per uh, stat of these. There is a soft cap. I think it's around 40 and then a hard cap somewhere thereafter. Uh, the soft cap is where you start to get less and less of a return. And then the hard cap is where you're getting like, maybe like one or two extra points of damage uh, per, per extra point invested when you level up. So, don't need to worry about that too much. You'll notice that the finger seal here has another one. It's called Incant Scaling. If this was a sorcery stat, that would be Sork, it would be sorcery scaling. That's just the number that everything is, is that all the sorceries or incantations in this case will scale off of. Um, all sorceries and incantations, if they heal or deal damage, have a multiplier that's based around this incant scaling. And over here we can see that this increases with faith primarily and a little bit with strength, mostly from faith. I think this is what the strength scales from, and then this scales from the faith, the incantation scaling scales from faith. So you need 10 faith to use this, and 4 strength to use it, So meaning everyone can meet the strength requirement, but not all characters can meet the faith requirement. Now you don't want to try dodging with the, uh, blocking with this, <laughs> it's absolute hot garbage. You might as well just get hit. When we go over to the shield, 
we see that there's also some information here. So we have a strength, strength that scales with D, that's if you like two-hand it and punch people with it, requires 10 strength. If you don't meet the strength wear shield, it, I believe it makes it to where you still take damage or you take a, or it requires a lot more stamina per hit, and you don't want that. So just make sure that you have the strength requirement for any shield you're using. In this case, you have the strength requirements for your shield, you have all the stat requirements for your shield, for your weapon, and for your finger seal. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of problem there. As you can see over here under equip load, we have medium load. And how the game works is the load actually affects not only how far you go, but also how much, uh, how many immunity frames you get. So we can get to about there, if we were to strip all our equipment off, and then dodge. We get there as well, but not only does it come out faster, but we might go a little bit further. Like, maybe a little bit. But I think we also get more immunity frames when we dodge. So if you want to be faster on your feet, then staying in light load is useful, but medium load is fine as well. Now, if you are here and you press the right and left bumpers, that will go to the next one uh, horizontally. So we can do the same thing here. We can say we are here for that one, but now if we press right bumper, we go to that one. It's just a fast way to speed things up. Now, so we've got all that, and miracles, or sorceries, or magic. The only way you can really, the only way you can modify what you have memorized is by going to memorize spells and then selecting them. We only have two here, so I wouldn't worry about that too much for now, and you don't really need anything different for quite a while. Now level up. You'll see that we need a certain amount of runes, 829, and we don't have enough. And uh, we can actually see how many runes we need by going to status, and it will tell us. Level 10, runes held, 437, runes needed, 829. Well, let's actually look at the attributes. So we have Vigor or Viger, if depending on how you want to emphasize things. This mainly gives you more hit points. Mine gives you more focus points, so more red bar, more blue bar. This gives you more stamina and lets you hold, lets you carry heavier gear. So this is the green bar. This increases your strength. This is useful for strength scaling items. So if you want something that will hit the enemy much harder, uh, so if you want to use weapons that scale a lot with strength, then you want to go with strength. It, there's dexterity. This increases casting time, but it primarily is going to be used for increasing uh, dex scaling weapon damage. Intelligence is primarily used for sorceries and increasing the sorcery uh, staff damage, <laughs> the uh, sorcery scaling. The faith is used for incantation scaling. Arcan is used mainly for fi mainly for item discovery, but there are some special um, incantations and sorceries that scale off of arcane. Uh, those are generally either. Arcane is kind of a weird one, because the things that scale up a bit are, like, things that are somewhat difficult to get. Um, the Faith versions are a little bit hard to get. They're uh, the dragon sorceries, uh, the dragon incantations. Uh, don't worry about those. <laughs> that seems more of an in-game thing, because you have to defeat dragons to unlock a lot of them. Instead, just focus on uh, what you think is going to help you the most. You can always remake your character, you can always start another character if you want, uh, but things that will go pretty well for you. If we stick with our current sword and our current setup, this primarily scales with strength. So, if you were to level up, your best bet is to upgrade Vigor, Mind, Endurance, Strength, and Faith. So, Vigor, Mind, Endurance, and Strength. Vigor, Mind, Endurance, Strength, and Faith. Yeah, those five. Vigor, Mind, Endurance, Strength, Faith. 
So, strength. If you get up to 40 strength, stop leveling it up. Uh, that's that is the that's one of the hard caps for strength, or it's one of the points where it becomes very not particularly useful. I believe that's the soft cap, and the hard cap is a little bit higher, uh, but still, you're going to be getting very little per. You're going to be getting very little benefit per point in the strength after 40. Endurance is really nice. Increases the green bar, lets you swing more often. Mine lets you heal more often with your blue, with your heals. Vigor will give you more hit points, and Increasing Faith will let you heal for more, and when you get Attacking Faith spells, will let you use those Faith spells to attack the enemy more often. Uh, ignore Arcane and Intelligence, those don't help you in any capacity, and if you decide you want to go with, with weapons that are more based on Strength, then uh, you can use that. So... What we have here now is uh, the opportunity to go after uh, a boss and show you all of this stuff together. So, there is, and we can get on torrent, and there is actually a dungeon over here a little ways. So, we'd head sort of in a north northwest direction, and we will be able to find a cave. And so we have those guys over there, and we have this cave over here. Cave is right over here. And so we have this Site of Grace, as well as another co-op area. So let's go ahead and activate this. And did out... Okay, that's fine. Okay, and did this turn off? Yes. So we can turn this on, can see if we have any friends. As you can see, there are plenty of people who would like to do this dungeon with you right now. And uh, they are all more than happy to join you. But I actually want to show how spirits work, so we're not going to summon anyone. We're instead going to go with the Lone Wolf Ashes that uh, the girl gives us. Now, remember when I said we had the ability to be quiet? Well... This is a fantastic opportunity to do that. So we'll go in, we'll head to the right. We'll keep heading to the right, around this guy. And we will run through this boss fog. Now he's going to activate, and we are just going to summon those spirits relatively soon. What's going on here? Why isn't letting us do it? Is it because we have... Is it because we have that on? Yeah, well, learn new things every day. Alright, so we have our wolves now. Let's go ahead and hit our Cerulean Flask. Let's heal ourselves or the wolves and do their thing. And now let's help our wolves fight this guy. So charged heavy attacks are great, and we can then counterattack him, and it does a lot of damage, as you can see. Do another charged attack, and another. We missed that one, but we want to go do some jumping heavy attacks, and we can just let the wolves finish him off. Go on, doggos, get him. And there we go. Now after the boss fight, the wolves will take off. So we got our first talisman. Talismans actually go in this slot right here. So this one would reduce how much fire damage we take by increasing the amount of def fire defense we have. So you'll notice that our fire defense goes up by about seven or so points. <laughs> but there we go. If we run over here, we can do the return to entrance. Uh, let's us leave here and head back to the front of the cave. Now there are other places that uh, you can go to here. So we can head up here back to Gatefront. And we want to... Uh, I, I want to show you where the... First up, I want to go and grab this map out here. So you'll notice on the map itself, 
There seems to be this little like icon here. Looks like a pillar. That's actually the map icon. It tells us that that's where we can get the map of this area. So let's jump on Torn. And let's ride over here. Let's grab that map. All right, so we have the map. Let's go. Let's jump back on Torrent and run away from all these dudes. We're gonna run back to this site of grace. Rest at it. That will reset all the enemies. And let's look at our map. As we can see, we have the map now. Really nice. So, the game is gonna tell you to head this way, and you're gonna fight the first story boss of the game. Uh, on this bridge. He is probably too hard for you right now if you're a brand new player. Many veteran players are going to are going to struggle with him for a while. So, where does the game actually want you to go from here if you don't want to fight that guy? Well, there's an area down here you can go to across this bridge. You can head over here across this road up here, and that will take you to a different area. Or, there's a cliff over here that you can get on that will let you go around the castle and up into this area. There's a guy who sells a magic staff over here that you can pick up, and that will let you cast sorceries if you started as a wretch. There's a sorcerer trainer behind a boss around here-ish that you can find. She's at a ruin over there, and she will sell you sorceries. And down here is really the second area the game wants you to go to. These right here are called Jails, it's spelt in an interesting way, and basically those are little mini-bosses that have a reward for defeating them. Over here is a dragon that you can fight. Over here is a, is a boss that leads... I think it's over here. It's a dungeon that has a boss that leads to this area. And uh, over here is another dungeon that you should check out, totally. Over here is another dungeon that you can check out, a catacombs. And then over here is a th is a, another dungeon that you can even check out that has a recurring uh, PC that the developers love to throw in. He's a lovable vagot. He's a lovable rogue, essentially. So go check those out. Have a great time. And uh, just remember that you can go and easily grab a bunch of early flowers, turn them into co-op items, and then go have some jolly cooperation with that. So, if you get stuck, if you go over here and you fight this boss, and you're just not having a good time, head down here. Fight these guys down here. Then head over here and fight these guys over here until you run into somebody who's too hard for you. Then maybe go up here and fight these guys up here until you run into somebody who's too hard for you. By then, you'll probably be strong enough to go and fight this guy. Maybe you'll have a good time. Maybe you won't. We'll see. But that's what co-op's for. There are lots and lots of people who are happy to fight, who are happy to help you fight this boss. Now, if you want to just slam your head against this boss until they die, the guy over here, the level of rogue, he sells an item, a shackle you will, that will stun this boss. So go and buy that from him if you are struggling to take out that boss. Now, let's say you just want to level up. You, you, don't care, you, you don't care about anything else. You just want to level up until you can beat the boss. Do lots of co-op. You'll get a ton of souls. You'll have a lot of fun. There's no stress, no danger in co-op. So just use this item, after enabling all of those those um, co-op pools that you can. But now let's say you've gotten a little further on the game and you want to use something other than a broadsword. Maybe you want to test out uh, using some sort of larger weapon. Well, there's a two-handed sword in here. We'll just kill this guy real quick. We'll uh, kill him effortless, effortlessly. We can grab this, the Lord Sworn's Great Sword. So if you want a different weapon, we can swap to that. Now we can't use it one-handed, but we can look at its moveset. 
Okay, so it's a four hit combo instead of a five hit. That is its heavy attacks. We can two hand it, which is what we have to do to use this. And then it's heavy attacks as well. And it's it's special is called Stamp. So we would Stamp and then use our heavy attack. Now, Stomping, or Stamping, gives you Power Armor. So this is a concept that happens in this game. So Power Armor... lets you flat out ignore attacks that are hitting you. I'll try to demonstrate that here. And then you can follow it up with your special. You also take reduced damage. Now, power armor is different from something in, that the game's armor calls poise. So you have poise. Enemies just have a stagger meter. So, you'll notice over here it says poise 2, poise 6, poise 1, poise 3. That's passive. So an enemy hits you while you're doing something that doesn't have hyper armor, or you're doing an action. And the... And there's a... Each enemy's attack does a certain amount of poise damage. And you are able to tank through that and not have your animations interrupted. Animations that do not have power armor. Yeah. Or hyper armor, I think is what people call it. And so, uh, let's say you're surrounded by enemies and you're trying to hit them. And they're hitting you. Well, if you have enough poise, you can just ignore their ignore them hitting you, and you can follow through with your attacks. Hyper armor is different. With hyper armor, we're gonna take off all of our equipment and we're gonna go get smacked up by somebody. And hopefully not die. Put them their gear on. And um, hopefully. Hopefully, we can demonstrate hyper armor. Okay, come on. As you can see, we have that hyper armor where we were able to ignore the stagger that his attack would have caused and still do our, our attack and kill him without any gear on. So that is hyper armor. Let's go ahead and put our gear back on. So, Piper Armor versus Poise. Poise is passive, and we don't have really have much right now, so enemies can just blow through it. Now, there is an area that we can go to, which has the first Miracle Trainer we can really talk to. And that guy, uh, we'll, we'll go and unlock the Sorcerer Trainer first, then we will go and unlock the uh, Miracle Trainer. Okay, so over here we have... Uh, this, so we're going to activate this pool, and we can, I'll show you what this is on the map. This, at the Waypoint Ruins, is where the Sorcerer Trainer is. To get there, also let's take off, let's take that off and give ourselves our sword again. The boss that you have to beat before you can get to the Sorcerer Trainer is down here. So let's go ahead and go in here and fight this guy. As you can see, we can summon our pets, our wolves. Go ahead and do that. As you can see, uh, they can't really hurt us if we are blocking. And we can just spam them with heavy attacks and then counterattack them to uh, do a bunch of damage. We'll get our blue back as our wolves keep them nice and busy. And then we will just do some more heavy attacks until they die. Alright, so that works great. We can go in here and we can say hello to the person behind this door. This is Selen. Tarnished, are we? I am sorry you here. I want to learn sorcery. I dare say your proclivities are far from ideal. Oh well, but one must I was ex as a revive you still. <laughs> Very well. But I refuse to anticipate. So she will sell you sorceries. If you started as a wretch or you just want to learn sorceries. 
Now, there's also this Sight of Grace here, it's just so you can teleport back to her very quickly. Now, we didn't actually take any damage that time, so we're uh, not going to really worry about it. We'll just get back on Torrent, and uh, let's go and unlock the Miracle Trainer next. Alright, so, this is what's called the Round Table Hold. In order to get to the Round Table Hold, you have to first go over here and at least enter this boss fog, this boss's area. How you can do that is you can go into the boss fog, I have the cutscene, and then before you've been fighting the uh, boss, you can go to system, go to close the game, and you can quit the game, and that will still count as going into the boss room. What I recommend you do is just use all of your runes, and then go fight the boss, and <laughs> die, and then uh, you'll be able to see what you can do from there. It'll give you an idea of what you're going to be up against. But this guy is the Miracle Trader. Oh, welcome so, to the Round Table Hole. I teach incantation so that one day ensuring by the way. So, we do most tarn you are well. We can go to study incantations, and he has urgent heal, cure poison, all of these. Now, if you want to use magic offensively, then you can use these. But I highly recommend that at least for your first playthrough you instead rely on shield, sword, and you'll notice you can't use anything here. Uh, the reason for that is the game just doesn't want you to accidentally kill NPCs that uh, it doesn't want you to kill. If you get, When you get to the round table, you can come over here. This person sells items. If for some reason you miss the blue girl, uh, she would sell the items here as well. If you want to get your hands on a mace, some sort of hammer, uh, you can buy one here. You can buy the finger seal. This is 100% block shield, just in case. And they just have some items that you can buy in the event that uh, you started as Depry as a wretch or something else. You just want to play with some new weapons. Now, let's say you have... Let's say you want to check out other things. Well, I don't know what this guy does yet. But over here is the blacksmith who can upgrade your gear. You're a new nomad, lay out your... So you can strengthen your armaments. You can upgrade these all the way up to plus 25, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think you can. You can sell items to him. And you can apply your ashes of war to whatever item that you have unlocked. There is this lady over here. Uh, she can give you a buff, which, when you use it, you get a lot of damage resistance. Uh, however, that buff being in your inventory reduces your max health by 5%. 5% is not really going to make a huge difference as to if something's going to kill you. There's very few instances where it's really going to matter. And down there is a powerful NPC you can duel. Uh, as you can see, there's lots of bloodstains down there. So, just be aware, if you jump down there, you're most likely going to lose any, any runes that you might have had. This is an NPC you can speak to. He doesn't do anything to us right now, but uh, you can say hello to him, and he will uh, answer your questions. But alright, that is the mage trainer that we ran into, Selen, that we rescued. This is the miracle trainer, the blacksmith over there, Kale, aka Santa Claus. They have a bunch of stuff they can sell you as well. So let's go ahead and trans. Let's go ahead and teleport back here. So I want to go over to the Waypoint Ruins because I want to show you the last thing that you should probably pick up uh, within like the first hour or so of gameplay. If you don't, don't worry about it. But uh, I would recommend you grab it ASAP. And that is, we want to go outside of the Waypoint Ruins. And we want to make our way to the northeast. You notice that some of these seem to be death drops, because they are. Uh, we can make our way over here. And we just want to grab a very specific item from a specific locale. So we can go over here, we can find a church of sorts. 
out here somewhere. Take a little bit of time to find it. We can so Okay, we have another side of grace over there. That's good. And just looking for this location. If you're wondering, all I'm doing is just pressing the dodge button a lot. It makes this run slightly faster, not by a huge margin. Alright, so I think we need to go that way. I'm not sure. Right, let's just keep going, and we will find it soon enough. Alright, so that pig is probably after us. See a giant over there. Ah, here it is. So we're going to go over here, the third church of Madaka. That pig absolutely wants to duel. So let's send him to the Shadow Realm, shall we? Have our shield up. And well, uh, he's, he's not particularly <laughs> robust. So, there's two things that we should get here. First off, we can come over here, we can grab this. This is a sacred tier, I don't remember what that's used for. But this is the item that's really important for you. What is the Flask of Wondrous Physic? What that does is a handful of things. First off, we can go over here to Mix Wondrous Physic. Now, we only have one thing we can use it for, the Crimson Tear, so it restores half of total HP when mixed. Now, you'll get another one, and that one can restore half of total FP. Now, you can get two of the health ones, you can also get two of the FP ones, if you just wanted a full heal. And we can go to our bar here, and it's automatically put it there. So if we got hurt, we could use that as a free heal. But all right, and then when we get other uh, items, we can use other things that we can put in there. Those can be uh, used as well. Now, we got that sacred tier. What those are used for is upgrading your flasks so they heal more. So increase the amount replenished by flasks. Use a sacred tier to increase the amount of HP FP replenished by your flasks. So our flasks are ever so slightly stronger now. You'll notice that when we go over them now, they are flasked crimson tiers plus one. So they are just a little bit stronger at healing us. So if we had increased our hit points or FP, that would just heal or recover a little bit more. But that's the main ones. Uh, with all of that, you should be able to get through a decent portion of the game. Make sure that you go uh, at least say hello to this boss before going back here and resting at the Castle Ward Tunnel uh, side of Grace, and that will let you uh, go to the route to the Table of Lost Grace, aka the Round Table. But all right, there we go. I think that should help you. Remember, light attacks. Heavy attacks, charged heavy attacks, dodging, there's also a back step that should do a different attack, and jumping. There are no immunity frames when you jump, by the way, just, just to be absolutely clear about that. Use the urgent heal to heal yourself. There's the upgraded version that, that we can get from the round table, which is an AoE heal, which I guess we should probably show off for you. So let's go ahead and go over there so that we can look at that specifically. So we can go say hello to this guy and we can get normal heal. Now, this is useful to us. I guess we'll just go back to the third church of Madaka. This is useful to us because healing your friends in co-op is very useful. I don't recall if it heals your it heals your minions, though. Your, the spirits that you can hire. But we can uh, swap that over if we want to have both. And so with urgent heal, because it's only a self-heal, you can't hold it down. It'll just happen. With heal, notice that golden area over there. We can just hold it down and it won't go off. This is so that other people can come over here and be healed alongside you. 
very useful, uh, highly recommend, but it's a little bit more expensive. So keep in mind that you really are paying a premium to be able to heal other people in the in the game. So this one costs 32, this one costs 16. I think it heals around the same amount, but it's able to heal everyone instead of just yourself. All right, but there we go. Guys, I hope this tutorial works out for you. I hope it's useful to you. My name is Infinimer, and this has been Elden Ring, our new player guide. Uh, go ahead, leave me a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and just share the video with whoever you think would like it. And I will catch you guys later, and hopefully see you out there. But remember, and I will leave you with this, use those fur-calling finger remedies. Absolutely use them. You can farm the materials to make them, no problem. And really, if you're struggling with the game, there's no excuse not to have a summon with you for every single boss fight, so long as uh, so long as they are there to join you. You can find tons of people who want to join you pretty much at every boss fight in the game at this point, unless you're really far ahead, at which point you don't really need to be watching this. So there are tons of people out there to help you. Go out there, enable enable co-op with that, with the fur calling finger remedy, and just do lots and lots of co-op and have a great time with the game. And also, and this is very important, do not go and like actually try to defeat Margit. Do not sit there and slam your face against this, well, against the first boss. Do not slam your face against the first boss for like an hour or two. And then give up. Also, that that mounted dude that we saw over here, don't fight him. Not right now, unless you want a hard fight. You can beat him at base level. It is completely possible. But it's going to take you a while. And you probably won't enjoy it unless you really like just learning how that boss works. Now, again, after you've done this, you've gone to the round table, you, you've unlocked the trainers, you've gone over here, you got this... this Wonder, this flask of wondrous physic. Um, you can go over here, you can get this map, and uh, really, you have two areas, you have three places that you can go. You can go down here, to uh, the southern area here. You can go over here, you can go up here. There's tons of places you can go. There's an area over here you can go to, there's an area up here you can go to. So you definitely have options, you, but that should come after you tried to fully explore this area and done a lot of the dungeons here. All right, but basically, if I had to put the areas in order, I would say this area until until it's too until you've either cleared all of it, or you just want to do something else. Then this area until you've cleared all of that, or it becomes too hard. Then this area until you've cleared all of this, or it becomes too hard. And then this area until you've cleared all of that, and, be, and it becomes too hard. I guess maybe that one over there. Uh, but remember, you can get around the first boss fight by just going through here. There's a cliff that you can go around. That will take you around this castle. So you actually don't have to even go in here to get past it. Okay? So, feel free to just ignore this and explore. Now, if you start it as Wretch and you want to uh, find items to cast spells, there's a merchant over here ish who will sell you, uh, he's a wandering merchant, who will sell you a staff you can use. The merchant in the round table will sell you the, yeah, the twin maiden husks or whatever it is, the vendor. They will sell you a sacred seal, uh, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, there are also those merchants pretty much everywhere around this area. There's another one that is over here-ish, I think. And there are lots of quests all around here. This is an open world game. So feel free to just go around and find cool stuff, try to get the places you can't you don't think you should be able to get to. That's always half the fun of open world games. Riding out there until you go into a place where you know for sure that if you actually find anything, you'll just get wrecked. Uh, that's that's half the fun of open world games. It's going out there, being surrounded by things that are incredibly dangerous compared to you, but still grabbing items uh, and uh, being able to escape and maybe beating them. Uh, that's half the fun. Maybe beating them at their own game, essentially. It's half the fun. But with Torrent, you are incredibly mobile compared to most enemies. 
And there's a, there are those sites of grace. Just activate as many of those as you can. Remember, you can attack enemies pretty easily uh, with torrents and be it manage to take on groups of enemies that you probably shouldn't be able to take on. But alright guys. What's that? Alright guys, my name is Nintendo Marin. This has been all of them, right? Go ahead, leave me a like, comment, subscribe, and the bell and share as we go everything you like it, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.